In today's video, I want to talk about 10 feature requests that I would like to see implemented in Cubase 9.5. So number one is new automation lanes. And what I mean by that is the specific ways that you can sort of draw automation within Cubase. So right now, what you have to do is click on the line area and have these little draw points. You can use the draw tool. You can use the parabola tool. You can do various things like that. But the gist of it is it's a point by point basis. Um, now I'm going to show you something in Bitwig is here's an automation lane. Um, the way that you make new automation information for one is you left click with the mouse that adds a little point. If you have the control uh, selected and then hover over the line area, you can sort of dynamically change values. You see how it grabs like two points at a time? And this just kind of speeds things up. And then when you use the Alt, when you uh, go between a slope like this, you can change the slope and it's this perfect little curve instead of these points that sort of are jagged edged and don't really um, smoothly transition in cubase to get that smooth transition you'd have to have more points um, but just the way that you make a curve like this is so much easier in bitwig because all you do is you have two points and then click alt and then make a curve super easy you don't need multiple tools you just have the left left mouse click control and alt and this is basically a whole range of different tools um, or just one consistent, easy way of making changes to automation. So number two is something that has to do with the last request, and that has to do with the fading, fading in and fading out system here on Cubase. So currently, what I do like is you have these little points on the corner you drag over, and that creates the fade creates the fade length but what I don't like is that you have to open up this secondary window thing and then that's where you draw in the like curve values and then you have to hit apply and then and what specifically sucks about it is that there's this like audio representation of what's being changed but to me it doesn't look like it's actually accurate for one you see how it lifted the audio like at this null point in the audio i don't it doesn't make sense um instead what they should do is have the same sort of point system where you add points on the audio event have this line be editable on the audio event and then when you hit control you can adjust multiple points dynamically and then when you hit alt you can uh alter the curve amount just like in bitwig with the automation length and stuff that would be so much simpler and quite a bit better of a system it would, it would improve the workflow in cubase the other thing is having this secondary window is when you click away it disappears and then you have to it's i don't know it's to me it's it's an old implementation of cubase that kind of has to be revamped and updated Number three is a dynamic sort of auto-focusing of what you're editing within Cubase. Now, it's kind of hard to explain, but let me show you what I mean. So currently in Cubase, let's say I want to edit this MIDI event here on this track, and then I want to edit some audio on this track. So currently when I double click on it, I have it set to open it up in this lower section. It might open up in this window here for you. Um, but either way, you see how it's like, it's not zoomed in. I have to go and zoom in on this section manually. Um, then if I want to go to this audio, here it's zoomed in. Um, but it's not representing all the audio 
in the rest of the timeline within this area. So each one of these is individually sort of in this section. And I'm not even certain if I make a change in here, if that makes changes to all of these. It's kind of unclear. Um, I think that's maybe a feature or an option in the preferences in Cubase that you can change, or I might have to bounce this down to a separate audio, and then that would edit it separately, etc. But, so again, let's go back to this MIDI. Okay, now it's kind of zoomed in. I'll go to this section. Now it's zoomed in too much. Um, I gotta sort of zoom out and stuff. It seems not that bad, but when you go to something, again, with Bitwig, is here, whenever I click once on the item, it dynamically switches nice and smoothly between whatever it is I'm editing. And then th the way they fix the problem with different lengths is let's say I'm on this, this section here, and I go to this, you see how it's it's not adjusting for the length, the different length of these events. But if I double click on it, then it automatically zooms in to the full length. And then I go to this small one, it dynamically shifts it to the center, nice and focused. If I want it to be perfectly zoomed into the length of the event, I double click on it. Just like super easy, dynamic, auto-focusing, makes the editing process from all these different tracks and different types of tracks just so much easier. And then look at how these little events, it's fully represented in this area here as far as what's in the timeline. If I move this up, you can see I'm on the third event and moved it on the third event. I can see it in both sections. And then if I go into this auto, these, these are duplicates of itself. And I go here and make some changes. Let's say I delete that. You can see it's only deleting on this one event. And on this duplicate, it's not editing. And that's the way that my mind works when I'm working with these events. If it's on the timeline like this, if I'm editing and making a change to one, I, I'm not thinking about this duplicate here and wanting the exact same change. That's just a weird thing to to happen. And that does happen in Cubase. Let's see if I delete that. You see how it made changes to all of these? And I'm like, what? Like, why would it do that? And then I think, okay, well, it's because I duplicated it. Sure. Um, but then I have to go ahead and bounce this, replace it. And then I can do this change. Now it works. But then I go to this one and I'm like, well, no, I want to, <laughs> I don't want to do that on all of them. Then I, I would continually have to bounce down, then make the change. Uh, to me, that's, that's just weird. Number four is the ability to rearrange and move tracks within the mixer window. So currently, if I want to move the placement of all these tracks, in here, I can do that easily. That's fine and dandy. Um, but in the mixer window, it kind of like, it seems like you're going to be doing that. But what it does is it copies everything from this track, like the inserts and the EQ or whatnot onto a different track. And that's kind of dumb and annoying. In a sense, I want the ability to do that. Let's say if I hold down Option or Alt, and then drag it onto a new track, then that would make sense to me. Um, let's go back to this. Ooh, I did something. There we go. So if you can just, you know, whenever I have the, the window open on my right-hand screen, I see in the mixer window two things that I'm trying to mix that, ooh, I should rearrange it. And I, I can just quickly drag and drop and reorder it in the mixer window. That would be like super fantastic for workflow because then I don't have to go and look at that same track and then find it in the other window and then move it. And then I'm like, it interrupts the workflow. Number five is the ability to remove a track within the mixer window. So again, 
you would think you would be able to do the same things here because like in let's say pro tools um in their mixer window you can move around things you can delete tracks and all that stuff it all makes sense but for some reason in cubase you can't remove a track in in this mixer window it's so weird but so like here's the let's say the drum kit i have to go find it in this section and remove it here and i cannot do it in this section that's just it seems so strange they wouldn't have implemented that <laughs> as well as the moving the tracks that seems weird to me number six is the ability to switch tracks between stereo and mono now i know this might be like a very difficult thing to implement in a daw but other daws have done it they have just a simple button that you uh, go into the track settings area and you can just switch it to to mono or to stereo between the two um and that that would just make things a lot more simple i think in the uh the creative part of cubase because when i'm making let's say i have a loop that's actually mono but i want to start using that loop in like i want to spread it out and the best way to spread it out is with like a stereo delay thing and I use a stereo delay plugin to do that. But when it's a mono track, you just can't do that. I would have to send that to a stereo group track and then uh, do my processing on that stereo group track. The other uh, way to do that is to like create a, tr a new track and somehow get it to record or import or bounce into a stereo uh, file and then import it into there. Like it's. It's just a lot more work and not very intuitive rather than just the ability to switch between stereo and mono. And I think that would help as well with compatibility for different plugins that are only mono and stereo. Um, if they can implement that, that would just make a lot more intuitive sense for the end user and it would speed workflow up yet again. Number seven is automatic tail size detection whenever you're rendering audio in place or when you're freezing an audio track. So in here, let's say I wanted to freeze this audio. Freezing, essentially what it does is it bounces all the audio down into its little freeze file and then it plays back the audio rather than whatever's kind of here in the system. And you have to like guess whatever tail size it's going to be um that's especially bad for let's say um when you have an effects insert or you have like midi that's playing something in an instrument and that instrument has things going on with like reverb tails it seems like it should be easily detectable uh and implemented in that way let's uh let's go down to the um edit render in place settings so here again you you select the tail size and this is not intuitive at all for people who don't know what these little values indicate bars and beats it's like you know it's not immediately intuitive but if you had an option for clicking you if you had an option to set the tail size or a little check mark to automatically set the tail size until there's like almost no audio obviously let's say certain plugins might create a little bit of analog simulated noise and then the tail size would just never end but what you could do is set a threshold um, of like minus 60 decibels and once the audio reaches minus 60 decibels it cuts the tail size off and it would just do that automatically and maybe if you had the automatic tail size option for like on or off you could also have a uh, audio threshold like i was just talking where you can dynamically change whether uh, the threshold of what that value would be like minus 50 decibels and then when you render the audio and you see it's just continually going on and on 
um, then you can go back and change the actual tail size to what you specifically want. So I don't know, that's something that would just make intuitive sense for the end user once again. Um, and if you can implement something such as this here, detect silence in audio, and then it like automatically finds a certain point where there's almost no audio, and then it creates like this, um, I don't know, I can't remember what it does. It either like edits it out or cuts it out or mutes it or something. If you can implement that, I think it would be fairly easy to implement an automatic tail size detection. Um, and many people have requested this. Number eight would be a Melodyne quality very audio, something with a formant option built into it. So let's go ahead and just open this up and go into the very audio. Now, I like the way that it's implemented in the editor window. That doesn't have to change. The visual aspect of editing and everything is totally awesome. And I like um, the standard algorithms like the Elastic Pro and stuff. Those are like top-notch quality and I think they're cutting edge as far as DAWs go. Um, but still, even though they're like, it's everything is like nice like that, I've had many times in the past where I'm trying to edit the pitch and just correct pitch in like a very non-crazy way. Um, but you can hear that pitch correction being worked at like it's almost like a like that very auto-tune sound and it's very difficult to do general pitch correction without getting that auto-tune sound um, something like waves tune i've had even better success than very audio um, which is unfortunate because i like the implementation that they have it into the window system and i don't want to have to use a plugin to do that type of work. But if you could uh, sort of update the quality of how it makes those picture corrections, then that would be super awesome. And I think the formant type of stuff, like you've implemented in the sampler tracks, there's a formant option. Let's see if we can find where that formant, here it is. So the, you know they have an algorithm uh, built in for formants. So I don't know. It seems like it'd be an easy thing for them to sort of relook at and try and improve for next the next version of Cubase. So number nine would be something like a Vocaline plugin that is used for editing and matching timing between different audio sources. So this here is the Vocaline plugin, and I'll give you two demonstrations, or not demonstrations, but two scenarios of when it would be perfect to use something like this. So in this video here by, I think it's Chad Johnson, he demonstrates um, a video recording with where the audio was, it's not usable. And then the guy came in, the actor, he came back in to the studio and did a, a vocal overdub, but it wasn't perfectly aligned with the video. Um, using something like Vocaline would just kind of automate that timing editing and it matches up the, the audio with the video like perfectly because it's syncing the new recording with the audio from the old recording. Um, another good uh, use for this type of plugin is that, let's say you have a main vocal uh, singer and then you have backup vocals that are singing the same lyrics and trying to sing at the same time. But you know, they're never really that perfect. Um, but something like Vocaline, you can use that to line it up and then it, it, uh, it, does, it saves you quite a bit of time as far as editing goes. Uh, something like that would be a really good feature. And the way they implement it, um, the way that you implement using Vocaline in Keybase is fairly intuitive. You use sends and you use the plugin on the uh, the audio that you want to align, and you use the the uh, what do you call it the the main ooh what do they call it ah so they use the guide uh, audio, and you you send the audio from the guide 
into the plugin using the side chain. So it's fairly intuitive, and if they implement something like that, that'd be uh, super fine and dandy. And I th I'm sure a lot of post-production people would appreciate this. Number 10 would be the support for AAF audio formats for importing and exporting audio and timeline uh, information. So on the, uh, <clears throat> the Average Knowledge Base webpage, there's a great little blurb about what the two audio formats are. And basically, a AAF is the new version of OMF. And these formats, they, they keep the sequence and timeline information. Um, and it's like this standard format. So you can, let's say, export from Cubase. You can go here and export OMF as a, a general file, and you can import it into, into Pro Tools. And what that will do is it will know where all these specific audio events are supposed to be placed into the timeline. But OMF is, I think, starting to get old, and the new format is AAF. And I know I've had um, imported, or sorry, I've, I've exported uh, projects from Pro Tools into Cubase, and I had to use the OMF format. And I've had some kind of issues with the, the timing, because there's this, I think there's one feature where you have to, you say there's like an absolute timeline or not an absolute timeline, just something that kind of happened when I imported something and it, it didn't work properly. Um, and ever since then, I've kind of just been using the, uh, what do you call that? Consolidating the audio files so that they're perfectly all the same length. And all you have to do is just import the audio into your new project. So that was kind of a workaround. I think the AAF would be better suited for that purpose. And likewise, I think post-production people are the ones that tend to use this type of import-export feature uh, more often, and they would like this being implemented. So that is it. That is my 10 feature requests for Cubase 9.5. Um, let me know in the comments down below whatever you think should be implemented, whatever changes you would like to see. Um, maybe uh, let me know if I've sort of missed some big things. I've scouted the um, this, the, the, the Cubase forum here, and I've looked for a lot of ones that resonated with me. And there's a whole bunch of <laughs> different suggestions. Some of them I just don't even know what they're talking about. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that I think are quite important and would be valuable and be would uh, improve workflow and would add very nice features and whatnot for the next version of Cubase. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you liked this video and feel free to hit that subscribe button as well because I make tons of content on Cubase and mixing and mastering and various different things, production. Um, so anyways, take care and bye-bye now.